Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to the Ultimate Automation Challenge. Remember when I said this was going to be like 10 episodes long? Well, welcome to episode 24. We are still automating. I've got some different things going on for this episode. What I'm looking to do is to tap into more oil all the way down here. That way I can keep feeding the machine with crude oil so that I can make more and more steel, which I don't have a lot of at the moment. And so I'm going to try to tap into another natural source down there. And at the top of the map, I'm also going to start to prepare to move some of those slicksters next to this carbon dioxide vent. So I was able to defend this area a little bit from the meteorites in the last episode here. And then hopefully by the time I have this kind of dug up and, and just about ready to uncover, I'll have enough steel bunker tiles to kind of, you know, um, defend the top of this thing. As far as the space base is concerned, I have a couple of eh, little things going on over here just to kind of figure out, you know, how are my duplicates going to sleep in their bunkers and what what is that going to look like? So I think I'll have a plastic ladder here and then I'll put decorations right here and here. Hmm. I do have to be a little bit careful. They got this giant gold volcano right down here which could cause some problems for my dupes, but I don't think it's too much to worry about right now. I should be able to defend that just fine. And then once I get more gold tiles, I'll be able to like really spiff this up so that it's comparable to what we have down here in the other bunker. Where the interior decor is, oh, a 475, which is pretty good considering what it is up here, which isn't very good. One thing I have done is I've disabled the auto repair on the steam turbines. Thanks for the reminding me of that. That would be really bad if I had <laughs> kept repairing this. Well, I guess it wouldn't be that bad. I mean, we've got a bunch of iron right there, so it's almost like it's pre-delivered. What I'm going to do over here next to this carbon dioxide vent is I'm going to have a three-door setup once I can actually, once I can actually get there. So that way you go through one door and then the middle door and then that that door just kind of cycles closed and open and that creates a nice vacuum between the two areas even though it doesn't really matter that much because we're going to have carbon dioxide in there which is nice and heavy and then i'll put a bunch of slicksters in there and they'll output crude oil and whatnot right down here i want to take a little dig right over here just to see what's in this area and what might possibly be going on over here because i see a lot of regolith right there and it makes me wonder if i'm going to I might have another problem that I just don't see yet. Not to mention there's a good amount of eggs, eggshells over here that I'd like to get my hands on. I'm really good at counting. I've got seven dupes, so I need four. I mean, you have to keep it even, so that's what I'll do right there. Whoa, whoa, what'd you grab? Some incredibly hot granite. Hey, let's not go through there, please. Meep, I think you're stuck, bud. Here, I'll give you a comfy bed. That should at least make up for your inability to move around at the moment. Anybody? <clears throat> Meep needs a little bit of a ladder. Ah, yeah, there we go. Gossman's got you. All right, I've reset Meep to his other barracks. We don't want to sleep up there just yet. Let's see how this is coming along. <sighs> kind of slow. It is a long run all the way down there. Ah, it looks like they're working through it pretty quick, though. What is lime? Hmm. Consumable ore. So under consumable ore... Ha! Found you! Go figure, a Greco's moved into the new space base. So, obviously I'm going to have a barracks, but I need some other things that are going to be up there as well, such as I... Uh, a recreation room and things like that because I kind of figured the dupes are going to come up here at the end of the day and that's where they're going to want to live. It would also be nice if the bathrooms and everything, the showers and all that were up here as well. This thing up here as far as <laughs> um, having this ranch on top of my space base isn't ever what I really intended, although it, right now it's not half bad. I might end up getting rid of it. Uh, the general idea is that the transit tube access point is going to be like their, their first and last thing that they do 
outside of this base. Everything else is going to happen inside of here. So, you know, they'll be in an exosuit no matter where they go in the base once they leave this space base here. But I would like it to where I could, you know, if I can get some sunlight in and whatnot, that'd be kind of cool. Also get the solar panels up and running. The idea is that this base is going to be pretty much a brick. Just built up and in, into space. Hey, look at what I see. Crude oil. It's blowing up, it's blowing up. And I think what we'll see here is I'm going to start producing more steel because it was just a waiting coolant. Okay, so here's what I should do. If I make a smart storage compactor over here, I can hook it up to the kiln so that I don't make too much of it. Oh, here's another trick. If you just click on the material, it says right there, status, consumable, ore. I never noticed that till now. It's pretty handy. So that means under here, consumable ore. I should see refined carbon. And let's say I do 2,000 kilograms. Or maybe 10,000 is a better number. Wrangle this guy. These guys over here aren't that bad. They can stay there. Wrangle that guy. Okay, so now I have a better view of what's over here. Mm, nothing too fancy, really. I'll just go in here and dig it out and start to build some tiles to protect, you know, this area down here. Which has a nice, a lot, a lot of iron ore in there, some coal, mm, a whole bunch of bomb lilies and pinch of peppers. So that's good. So here's four slicksters that I could capture. <laughs> Going from the bottom of the map to the top of the map. I just press Alt and S to do that. It's kind of a kind of a lot, but I can start to dig this out. I've got several doors there, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. Not to mention what germs are here are probably getting <laughs> cooked <laughs> uh, pretty quick. Liam, what are you doing, man? What? A natural gas geyser? Look at this thing. Just floating in space. All right. Well, not quite space. Space is out here. But at least I found another geyser. That's awesome. Liam's got a really tough job. Look at him go. He's like, uh, I just gotta keep digging. <laughs> This is just entertaining. The amount of heat that must be there right now. I can only imagine. I'm going to try to protect the biome over here to the left a little, little bit from all that heat I just stuck out there. So I'm going to put a little bit more. Whoa, 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 Gossman. Oh, oh no, now you've done it. All right, you're free now. Wow, that is so much steam. Look at that, just... See, now that's where you could put a steam generator and it would just, yeah, no, never mind, it wouldn't work. Never mind, never mind, got my hopes up. Like, uh, here's a question. Do you think the fish feeders would work as a shield as well? Hmm. I tell you what, I'm going to find out. Because one way or another, I'm gonna dig up here and I'm gonna try to make use of this natural gas geyser. Maybe not today. Well, maybe. I don't know. Then. See, the thing is, I could get that natural gas so hot to where I won't even be able to use it. Ah, here goes Liam again. He just likes doing this every time. I guess the solar arrays are also indestructible. <laughs> if you can't detect them, just block them. Now, this is an interesting idea. Using doors underneath, like, your bunker tiles. Da Vinci saying you could... You could Use the doors to delete, like, the regolith and stuff, so... If you don't give it anywhere to go, it would destroy? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because you could move this stuff. Basically, uh, a... Almost like a conveyor. A door conveyor. <gasps> Are we up to that point again? Yes! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you open the doors, you bring the material in, and then you close the doors... And it conveys everything into one tile spot. I'm going to have to add that to the list as well. This, this series is going to be like a million episodes long. Hey, you guys forgot to build this before you built that. I, here I was about to praise my duplicates for being super efficient this episode. Once again, they've read my thoughts. And have proven me wrong. Okay, so we were going to talk about... Yes, the fish feeders. I mean, I mean, why not? Oh, lucky me. 
This actually moved what was ever up there. It must have gotten hit, and then the stuff moved over there. Or whatever. I was thinking, how am I going to clear all that hot stuff off the natural gas geyser? Because, you know, if I don't do that, it'll just melt everything. Because it's going to heat up that natural gas, and I won't be able to get a pump in there. Space fish. That's what we're going to be feeding. Hey, where's all my steel production? Nobody's running this. Not pumping. Is it because it's backed up? Ah, it's because it's backed up. Why? Because the oil refinery is busted. Oh! Well, there we have it. The fish feeders do not block meteorites. <sighs> Nobody ever repairs anything. Anybody? Somebody. <laughs> All my Atmo suits are like right there. <sighs> Deliver. Deliver. All right, finally we're making some more steel. Ah! I just turned around and now the natural gas generator. All right, so EXI, this is his Pachu farm here. This is currently has 13 ponds and uses just about 16 kilograms of algae per day. Uses two sweepers per pond, collecting the eggshells, meat, tropicals, percentages, and stuff. Pretty ridiculous. Let's take a look at his picture. So if we take a look at his farm, this is what it looks like. Mm, this is very nice and organized. Look at that. Got a couple of fish right there with a storage compactor beneath it. And where's the arms? There's the arm. Oh, and there's another one right down there. So this one here... Oh, I see you've got all the algae traveling here like that. And you can pick up and drop it in from there. That's pretty cool. Nice and organized, too. Good job. It's like a 1,150. Oh, my gosh. Here I was thinking, maybe it'll just never happen. I'll never get this base organized. But you know what? If I have a 1,000 cycles, I might. I might get that far. All I know is this stupid water. Just keeps dripping all over my base. Stop it! I keep mopping up the same areas like 15 times. And stressing out my dupes. Stressing me out. It's because of this steam. It just like hits cool air and then all of a sudden starts to puddle up. <sighs> okay, so because I have enough steel at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and try to tap into this natural gas geyser. Or the space geyser. I'll need to protect myself for any, any meteor showers that might find their way into this area. So I need to build the bunker tiles around it. Yeah, speaking of which, here they come. Now, I think if the angle of the meteorites I should be okay if I start here. And this is as high as I'd need to go. The nice thing is that this will provide some protection for the stuff below it as well. It's starting to break through. I'm going to have to do that. Ah, good. My cool steam vent is about to start firing up again. and Making lots and lots of water. It's time to put a door down here so that this chlorine just doesn't keep gassing off forever. I mean, look at all the chlorine around here. So one of the questions is, can I destroy some of this old equipment that's around here? And I believe the answer is, I think I can. I can at least get rid of the security door. The lockers, I think, are stuck. But I was able to get 200 kilograms of copper out of that door. So yeah, yeah, I, I could do a little bit. One of the other projects I've been working on here recently is a new calibration tower for my 3D printer. It's actually a whole process that's captured inside of a Google spreadsheet. And because I'm running kind of a, a modified Ender 3 at this point, and I'm running higher end materials because I have it tweaked to run higher end, higher temperature stuff that you don't normally run on a printer like that. I really need to be confident that when I go to send a print to that, you know, if it's going to use 200 grams of material, that it isn't wasted or, you know, because of a, a silly thing like I never figured out what speed I needed to run or how, what the ideal temperature is, especially when you get to like layer bonding and whatnot. So. I don't know if you're into 3D printer stuff, but you might want to check the description there because I'll be uploading that to my Thingiverse account. 
<sighs> All right, so a whole bunch of steam has found its way in, in around this carbon dioxide vent, which definitely, at this point, I, I can just uncover this thing. Whoa, can't dig that up. Why is that tile there? Why'd I put that there? I don't know what I do, what I'm doing. So I can put in some mesh tile here, there, and everywhere. Where are you going, me? What? Oh, you're just picking up some nice hot iron to throw around my base. Thank you. Now where are you going? Oh, okay, you're going over here to the space base. I got it. Aha! That's what's going on. Steel production's coming along pretty good. I have another 1,700 that I can put down. That would be enough to cover this natural gas geyser over here. Man, I'm working on two geysers at the same time. How about that? You know what? I think it's going to be smarter. I'm not going to get to this one quite as fast as I'm going to get to that other one. So I'll put the bunker tiles on this one. Man, here's another Dreco. I got too many Drecos around here. This one's enjoying the sauna. Yeah, and I got too many Drecos inside of here as well. Here's what I need to do. If I put a door there and then a critter release here, I can just kind of, you know, offload the critters from there to there because I can't feed them all with just these couple of plants. I'm not really going to take care of another plant. I want to say four is as many as I can possibly hold inside of here. What do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Yeah, it's too many. How's the water doing? Oh, it's doing pretty good. I think I might make... Another one of these self-powering hydrogen units. And just make it right here. Let's see just how compact I can make this. Ooh, that's pretty good there. <laughs> I think that's about as compact as I can make it. Hey, you guys managed to get yourself stuck. What else is new? There you go. So the thing about this one is that it's get, uh, oxygen is just going to go straight into the exosuits. So many exosuits are just being collected right down here. I have to keep like, I should really just have an access point to where they can use that and go back up over here. That's really what these dupes need. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to have two power shutoffs. So once the automation flips, I will disconnect everything connected to this guy, all right? So these pumps, the electrolyzer, all of that will just get disconnected and we'll dump out this side over here to the right and that will make its way into the battery bank. So I'll use a not gate like that and we'll just go up to here like so. All right, so how am I coming along up here? Everything's getting blasted. Oh, oh, lucky me. Look at this, it's all nice and clear. And that is what I want to see. So now's my opportunity to go over here and build my bunker tiles and get rid of all this extra stuff that I don't want. Hopefully I have enough resources. I just don't want like tons and tons of regolith in here and then I have to, you know, like make a bunch of, you know, paths or whatever to go pick it up and get rid of it. So I'm going to put this to a sub priority of seven. We're going to get this done quickly. You know what? This stuff is going to be under a lot of heat, so I'm going to just use insulated abyss light. It'll be expensive, but I think it'll be worth it. And I could just dig this up right down here, move those materials. Everybody keeps asking, if the water is exposed to space, is that why it's turning into steam? And I don't think so. I think it has to do with all of this incredibly hot material that's on top of it. So if you take a look at the temperatures, you can see it's just all of this regolith is just heating up whatever water that's over there. And that's what's turning it into steam. It isn't a, a pressure difference thing. The game doesn't calculate that because you can see it right over here. It's condensing onto this bunker tile. So it, space isn't turning it into steam. It's the heat from all the meteorites. However, if this game did work like real life, then Yes, that's what would be happening. Uh-oh, here comes the meteorites. Just don't hit here. Nine, priority level nine, just make this one happen. Just this one. <laughs> Guys, 
I just need this one dial. Just this one. No! Yes! No! Meep! Meep, where are you going? You know, that's not a bad strategy to clear out the gas for the geyser. Like this over here, there's just so much steam. I'm going to be dealing with puddles and stuff for a long time. But if I were to just knock a hole over here, I could just kind of let space do the work for me. Or I could just dig a hole right there and that would do it. I think that's a good idea. Maybe I think I want to turn this into a door first, but then if I dig that open, let it all go. Speaking of doors, this looks like a good spot for a door. Look at all that steam. Yeah. So now if I take this and I say if I go to 50 kilograms, I should be able to run some nice cool water through there and that will make this condense. Let's see what happens here. Boom, just like that. So the polluted water that's making its way out on the other end is actually st still kind of cool. It's at 15 degrees Celsius, so that's probably a pretty good number right there. I didn't move a lot of water through it, but that was enough to condense just about all the steam that was in there, actually. Yeah, that condensed all of the steam in there. Uh-oh. I see unrefrigerated food. <sighs> yeah, that's actually a problem. So somehow the carbon dioxide ended up getting out of here. So I'm going to have to build kind of a very quick emergency gas pipe or I might lose all of my food. Ah, there we go. That list is much smaller now. This will ensure that I have a, some carbon dioxide over here. I'm not sure how that happened. Hmm. You can see my farm over here just went all toasty. Oh, uh, that's because this is set a little bit too aggressively. At one point I had cleared out all the gas and it wasn't working all that well. Mostly because a lot of it's running up to the thermal nullifier up there. Oh, here we go. This is what I wanted to see. Look at all that natural gas. Okay, so a lot of natural gas found its way through. Oh, ah, darn it. They are able to hit just this side of the tile there. Mm, I'll have to change those to bunkers. Hmm, so I put this tile right beneath the bunker tile and it was able to get damaged. Maybe I need to have a, a little bit more of a gap between the two. Although right now I need to get it down to a cool enough temperature to where I can actually put a pump inside of here. It's a little bit too hot. We'll see if an ice block, if I could even make one here, that'll have any impact. And it's melted. <laughs> it did, however, drop the temperature down, at least down here. Although, really, this thing outputs at 150. So, yeah. All right, so that's enough for today. I think we made some good progress here. I was able to uncover this natural gas geyser here and protect it from the meteorites. Hopefully I'll be able to kind of do what I need to do in order to make that. It's uh, useful, be able to get a pump in there, have to work some sort of radiator system. Probably can use the polluted water that these natural gas generators actually put out at a lower temperature and be able to make good use of that. You can see the water there. That's nice and cool. Or that or maybe just surround it with something that's cold enough for a while. I don't know. Actually, you know what? That'd probably be a great place to maybe put one of these wheeze warts unless they got a temperature that's too much. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode here of the Ultimate Automation Challenge. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.